Hi, I'm Frank Farmer, President of American Metal Roofs. I've been in the home improvement industry for 32 years and pioneered residential metal roofing here in Michigan. I am deeply concerned and take very personally the fleecing of homeowners with what I have called a fake metal roof. Recently, I interviewed a couple out of Lansing about their experience, their experience of buying a fake metal roof. Take 10 minutes and listen to their story. You will discover why trusting a company like American Metal Roofs, who has installed over $80 million worth of metal roofing, may be the best decision you ever make. The shingles on the house were about 20 years old. They were starting to curl. We talked to a couple of home improvement companies and the one company had a really good salesman who suggested a metal roof. We never have to replace it anymore. Since we were getting old, it sounded like a good idea at the time. They didn't really explain the type of metal roof they were going to put on. They installed it in January, so no rain, nothing melting. We got out there to check it in April or so. Looked like a nice horizontal seam, architectural metal roof. Looked nice on the house. And then we walked into the bathroom and there was water in both bathrooms. So, we have this written guarantee, supposedly. I go to the home improvement company and say, it's leaking. Nothing happens, no return phone calls. I go back a week later and try and find out what's happening. Nothing happened, no phone call, no action. I went back the third week. I was assured the president of the company was going to take a personal interest in my case. Mm -hmm. No calls, no action. Went back a fourth time, talked to the secretary. She said the president of the company doesn't take meetings and doesn't make appointments, but I can talk to the guy in charge of roofing again. So finally someone went out and looked at it and did some caulking. He put lots of caulking on and left. When it rained cats and dogs, the water just poured in. It would run right through the light fixture in the vent in the bathroom, just water would just run right down in both of our bathrooms and over our furnace. Like you were standing <coughs> under a miniature yeah. waterfall. We had so to put buckets you? there to catch all the water that would run through. This went on for three years. Three years? Yeah, three years of calling them, making appointments for them to come. I would go there and spend the day because I wanted them to see the mold that was in the bathrooms. It was just creeping and along. They didn't keep their appointments and they would say, well, they got called to another job so they didn't show up and then we'd make another appointment. And finally, when they did come, they said, we don't need to go inside and look at your house. And I said, well, I want you to see the mold. I want you to see what's going on. So finally he said, okay. And he went in and he looked and he said, well, just buy some kills or, you know, the mold um, paint that you buy. And that was all he said. Um, apparently they'd never educated themselves about mold. And then we um, finally called the Better Business Bureau. And so the Better Business Bureau sent us an email and said that um, this is what had happened. And, and um, so they were closing the file. So we emailed back and said, well, he, they never came and talked to us. They, you know, what they said was not true. And I'm going to share with you some photos that we took. The very first thing that we notice is that the pitch of your roof, in other words, the slope of your roof, is, is very shallow Right on that, okay? That product was never designed to be put on that slope. So first thing we knew is somebody didn't even understand what product should be used on, on what house. Second thing that we notice, if you look at all the pipes coming through there, mm -hmm. you'll see that none of them have flashing. Right. right. That what they did was they cut the shingle out around your pipe and then they used an adhesive caulk around that to try to seal that. What we found was the adhesive caulk that they used was bathroom caulk mm -hmm. and window and door caulk. Wow. Oh, geez, what a bunch of amateurs. Or do you think maybe they knew 
instead of spending $150, they spent 10. Right. Okay. So I'm going to share some other photos with you. This one is if you go to the ridge and you had a ridge vent put on that, that right. building. Okay. Do you notice that he just grabbed a hold of that ridge vent and he just pulled it up with his hand? Yeah. yeah. Well, they never removed the shingles on the top of that ridge. It's this thick up there with asphalt. The nails never even made it to the wood. Wow. But what good would it have done with that ridge vent? Because they never cut the ridge in. Yeah, I assume they cut the ridge in. How's that make you feel? Like I said, amateurs. So the next picture that I'm going to share with you is we're starting to tear off that roof. Okay, And, I, and, I, and you can see that you had a, a hole in that roof. <clears throat> yes. And then and what they when when we tore off that where that hole is at, yeah. there was nothing there. There was nothing fixed. So what you had is you had somebody who didn't know a how long it was gonna to take to do a roof, didn't have the skill level, nor had the people that had the skill level. My guess is you had some asphalt roofers or some guys that maybe had put windows in before that had no clue how this roof went on. And give you some other things. We'll take a look at that. the. Do you notice here that the underlayment stops right there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, underlayment is to be put on with a plastic cap nail, and that's a self-sealing nail because the what what you do with metal roofs is you put down an underlayment that becomes the sealing part because metal roofs will condensate moisture. So that roof has to be perfectly watertight. What we found here, they didn't know that. And that roof was put on with roofing nails pneumatically, and many of them driven right through. Right. The underlayment was just full of holes. Okay. When the underlayment goes to the edge of the roof right here, it's supposed to go over the edge of the roof. The metal then goes on top of the roof. That doesn't even come close to the edge of the no. roof. So that explains why we had a constant drip in one corner. The reason you run the underlayment over that edge is because <clears throat> that prevents the edge of your roof from rotting out. Right. When we took your roof apart, the whole edge of your roof was rotted out. Yeah, I can, I can believe that. So the underlayment did absolutely nothing. Some of the things I'll point out to you. On this, this is your gable edge. This is a this is a piece of trim that runs from top to bottom. The guys who put your roof on didn't use gable trim. They used a piece of metal that was nothing more than a piece that was bent over like this. Right. So the reason that they did that is they didn't know how the system went together. They went to the edge of the roof, they cut the shingle off, and folded it over your edge. Oh, the salesman told us the roofers were highly trained. Obviously. <laughs> He didn't know what he was talking about. The shingle that I showed you represents five feet. That's the distance that you see marked right here. According to the manufacturer, requires a minimum of five nails. In other words, every single foot along the way. This roof was separating, and when we took it apart, most of the roof had three nails. Some of it had two nails. So if you only put half as many nails in, the installation time takes half as long. Half as long. You're right. <laughs> okay. This next one is as we got towards the bottom of the roof. Wow. And you pull the underlayment back, there was a hole. And he reached in there with his hands, and it just crumbled in his hands yeah. as he pulled back. After seeing these pictures, how do you feel? Cheated. Yeah. You got what we call a fake metal roof. Mm, wow. And is that company still in business? No, but if it was still in business, I would have gathered up all the roofing and put it on their front door. <laughs> you had American metal roofs out. Tell me about that experience, would you? Well, I was determined not to get another roof. I wanted this one fixed, but when um, Claire came to see us, he 
explained it so well that I understood it. He explained the whole process, why you guys did what you do, the membrane, the locking systems. He pointed out the obvious failings on the metal roof we had from the other vendor, and he convinced my wife because she was dead set against any more metal roofing. I was roofing. not going to get another roof. Six years later, we're ripping this roof off. Right, yeah. literally ripping it off with tools and tearing everything off this roof. And we found a lot of rotted wood. Your building pitch was so low that the metal shingle was not designed to be put on there. Right, we didn't know about that. What did you end up choosing to be on that house now? We chose a vertical seam. Yes, a standing seam. Standing seam. Okay. And that is the only choice that could have been put on there. Not a barn roof. Not a screw through roof, but a hidden fastener standing seam roof. We're putting a roof on to be there forever. We're saying that was going to be on there minimum 100 years. I know you had told me prior that you put this roof on so your children could enjoy this roof and hopefully it passed on to the grandchildren. Right? Yes, the property has been in the family since the 20s. So it really is a legacy. Mm -hmm. Right.